Yo, today I'm going to talk about some of the shared lifestyle attributes between the oldest and healthiest people in the entire world. Although not everyone wants to live to be beyond 100 years old, there's still a lot to learn from these insights that can make our time on Earth much more enjoyable. According to an email survey by Axios, where participants were asked if they wanted to live to be beyond 100, half of the respondents stated this fully depended on their quality of life at this time, and roughly a third expressed no desire to live beyond that age. Many of the respondents fear dealing with poor health, becoming a burden on their families, or facing cognitive decline. And these concerns are all well-founded. The reality is that old age is often associated with disease and a lower quality of life. And I, as an American, was especially flabbergasted to find that this especially holds true here. According to world meters we sit at the 24th percentile or 46th in the world in terms of longevity. And even more surprising, when examining a graph comparing the life expectancy and healthy life expectancy across a few countries, I found that despite our high lifespan, the average American lives even fewer healthy years than their counterparts in countries with smaller lifespans. The average American spends a little over 12.4 years, or 16% of their lives limited by some sort of illness, injury, or cognitive impairment. And this has led to a crucially important question of how can we increase our lifespan and increase the period in which we are generally in good health, our health span, so to speak. To gain some insight, researchers have studied five isolated pockets around the world known as blue zones, where people tend to live substantially longer lives than anywhere else. These areas have provided valuable knowledge in the quest of old age. Let's meet the players. Just west of the Italian mainland, Sardinia is an isolated mountainous island with many citizens living near their family for their entire lives, and a majority of them sharing the genetic M26 marker stereotyped with exceptional longevity. Moving on to the islands just south of Japan, Okinawa is home to the longest living woman on the planet and was once called the land of the immortals. Children in Okinawa join a small lifelong circle of friends called a Maui, which sustains them for their entire lives. The citizens here live purpose-driven lives and are strict believers in the saying harahachibu, which is the practice of only eating until 80% full. Back home in the United States, Loma Linda is a smoke-free city just east of LA that is home of many Seventh-day Adventists. Its residents typically follow highly plant-based diets, exercise regularly, abstain from smoking and drinking, and volunteer very frequently. The fourth blue zone is Nicoya a district in Costa Rica that places a strong emphasis on faith, family, and neighborhood community. The positive outlook and social harmony of its citizens is maintained well throughout life through a heavy emphasis on plan de vida, families living in the same household, and frequent neighborly visits. Finally, there is Ikaria, a rocky island off the coast of Greece where people are almost completely free of dementia and chronic diseases prevalent in America. A third of the residents make it to their 90s and enjoy a relaxed pace of life, strong red wine in the evening, and long games of dominoes afterwards. The residents are also, and I'm particularly excited about this, avid herbal tea fanatics. Now that these blue zones have been introduced, I'd like to dive into four shared qualities that tie them together. And this is especially significant considering that these five locations, with locals over 100 years old, despite things spread all across the map, have developed these shared qualities completely independently. The first shared quality is actions. Blue zone residents have movement seamlessly integrated into their lives. They don't have to think about it. This is possible due to the high walkability of each blue zone as well as the various active recreational activities such as gardening and cycling. For example, almost all Okinawan centenarians grow gardens and Sardinian shepherds walk over five miles a day in their mountains as part of their jobs. The second shared attribute is beliefs, which mainly boils down to knowing when to take a break and a strong sense of purpose. All Blue Zone residents know how to take a break, whether it be Ikarians taking a ritual afternoon nap, Sardinians engaging in their routine happy hour, Okinawan Maui tribes sharing their evening gossip over sake, Nikoyans making routine neighborly visits, or Adventists sharing a weekly prayer, they all know how to chill out. In addition to that, all of these communities have their own way of imbuing their citizens with a strong sense of purpose. For example, Ikigai and Plan de Vida are core tenants in the Okinawa and Nakoya regions respectively that encourage the pursuit of a life filled with purpose. It's worth mentioning that purpose here is generally not so grandiose, but provides them with a strong reason for waking up in the morning, whether it is just to provide food or build houses for their community. However humble these reasons may be, this translates to a firm will to live 
that extends well into their 100s. This finding is further supported by the Edward Jones survey in which 14% of residents did not want to live above 100, citing that the main reason was because they did not have a purpose in life. In the same survey, the largest portion of folks, 35%, mentioned the lack of family and friends as the main reason, which leads to the next shared attribute of Blue Zones, community. In particular, there are three aspects of community that are shared between all of the Blue Zones. The first is faith. Nearly 100% of surveyed residents of all five Blue Zones professed to belong to some sort of faith-based community. In addition, proximity to extended family is another shared communal attribute. Families tend to live nearby each other or out of the same home. They also tend to commit to a life partner or and or invest a significant amount of time raising children. And finally, strong intracommunal social networks reinforce the positive routines and traditions each Blue Zone individually has. Particularly noteworthy are the Okinawans, where children are linked at a very young age to a Maui tribe that sustains them well into adulthood. The fourth and final common feature of Blue Zones is diet. And within this feature, there are three common dietary patterns. The first has to do with composition. Across all Blue Zones, residents enjoy a diet that consists of primarily unprocessed vegetarian food. In fact, many Seventh-day Adventists are completely vegan. The second is that calorie consumption is lower and generally front-loaded throughout the day. Okinawans frequently skip dinner and start each meal with the saying, harahachi bu, which reminds them to only eat until they are 80% full. Across all of the Blue Zones, breakfast is generally considered the largest meal, and dinner is the smallest. The residents of Loma Linda generally follow the age-old adage, breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. And there's actually pretty significant scientific backing for this. A research study conducted in Wolfson Medical Center revealed that when two groups of overweight women were supplied with front-loaded and back-loaded meals with 1,400 isocaloric daily intake, the large breakfast group lost two and a half times more weight and four more inches around the waist than the dinner group. During this research, a strong linkage was found between large protein-filled breakfasts and a reduced concentrate of ghrelin throughout the day, which is the body's natural hunger hormone. The third shared attribute in diet across all blue zones, or most blue zones, is drinking socially in the evenings. There's a lot of speculation around what the underlying health benefits are. Uh, while it is true that Sardinia's Canoe wine supposedly does contain two to three more artery-scarbing flavonoids than other wines, it's worth mentioning the social context that promotes community and belonging surrounding these drinks. With all that said, that is about all of the shared attributes that these blue zones have in common. As our world grows more connected and homogenized, these blue zones may not forever be so insulated, and it is absolutely worth bearing in mind these practices as we step into a much busier time. That's it for today. See you later.